our city's southeast side. I want to begin by thanking Jeff Sparks and the residents of Twin Air, uh, many of whom are with us today. Your passion for this community has been evident throughout this process. And I also want to thank Jeff Harrison and Citizens Energy Group. Uh, we've been exceedingly fortunate to have you as our partners in this endeavor. Jeff and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, today, we are here to announce that the city of Indianapolis has reached an agreement with Citizens Energy Group to acquire the former Citizens Energy Manufactured Gas and Coke Plant, now known as Pleasant Run Crossing. The city will purchase um, that land for $4.2 million. These 140 acres will be the future home of our community justice campus. And indeed, we believe it will be a catalyst for this neighborhood and for our community. Once built, the community justice campus will not be just the creation of a new facility. The complex that we build will reflect how we value the very well-being of every citizen. And we will build it with one purpose in mind, and that is ensuring first that justice in our community is served. And second, that those in need of our help will indeed receive it. As we move to value people <coughs> over prisons and futures over jail beds. These parcels of land will be the epicenter for holistic criminal justice reform throughout the city of Indianapolis, something that I believe that we can all be proud of. In addition, thanks to this agreement, as lives are saved, a community will also be revitalized. Local businesses will prosper. Employment opportunities will follow in waves, and even the water quality in the Pleasant Run Creek will soon be restored to a quality not enjoyed in more than a century. Where I come from, we call that a win, win, win. Indeed, this marks an exciting moment for the city of Indianapolis, an exciting moment for the Twin Air neighborhood. And I want to thank all who worked so diligently to reach this agreement. An agreement that is not only financially sound and fiscally responsible for the taxpayers of Indianapolis, but it also guarantees that Pleasant Run Crossing will receive the thorough environmental remediation that it deserves. Lastly, and again, I would be remiss if I didn't once again applaud citizens for embodying what it truly means to be a community partner. In this agreement, Citizens has balanced its business interests with the needs of our city. And for that, Indianapolis is indeed very grateful. Together, we're ushering ushering in a new dawn for the city of Indianapolis and I look forward over these next months and maybe years to working alongside all of you as we continue to raise up our city, to raise up this community, to raise up our neighborhoods surrounding this area and to give a shot in the arm to the southeast side of the city of Indianapolis. So it is indeed my honor to now introduce my partner, Jeff Harrison, President and CEO of Citizens Energy Group. Jeff. Thank you everyone. 
This is truly a great day for, for Indianapolis and a historic milestone for Citizens Energy Group. This agreement represents the beginning of a fresh start for the southeast side. Approximately 110 years ago, Citizens opened a manufactured gas and coke plant on our more than 100 acre site at Prospect Street that we now call Pleasant Run Crossing. Our plant was the economic foundation of this area of the city, providing good paying jobs for five generations of Indianapolis residents and producing affordable gas for the entire city. I would like to thank Mayor Hogsett for his leadership in spearheading the Community Justice Center development. I also know our team at Citizens has enjoyed working with your dedicated team to bring this project to reality. The Justice Center campus represents a community investment that will provide tremendous benefits to our city for generations to come. As someone who spent more than three and a half years working at the Prospect Street plant, I'm personally gratified to see our plant, our Pleasant Land Crossing facility, poised to lead an economic revival for the southeast side. Along with our friends at Twin Air Neighborhood Coalition, we were thrilled by the benefits that will be provided by the Community Justice Center campus. Like our plant did 110 years ago, we are confident the Justice Center campus will become a catalyst for economic growth, additional area investment, and employment opportunities for the people of the Southeast Side. As we work collaboratively with the city, we are moving forward with environmental remedi remediation at the site. We are confident the remediation can be completed to accommodate development of the Community Justice Center and other appropriate reuse opportunities. In addition to our recent improvements to the Pleasant Run Creek, we'll be planting more than 1,000 trees at the site as part of our creek restoration and our 10,000 trees, 10, trees program. And finally, by the year 2025, we will restore water quality in Pleasant Run Creek to levels not seen in more than 100 years. We'll do this by eliminating sewer overflows to the stream through construction of the Pleasant Run Tunnel as part of our Dig Indy project. In keeping with our commitment to being a good corporate citizen, our, vis our vision for Pleasant Run Crossing has been to return the site to uses that will enhance economic development and quality of life for the Southeast side. Today's announcement regarding our agreement is a significant step towards our achieving that vision. Now I'd like to introduce Jeff Sparks with SEND for a few more comments. Jeff. Please. start out by thanking Paul and the SIM board and Brad, Yay, Brad for allowing me the opportunity three years ago to be introduced to an amazing community, Twin Air. I think a lot of folks, and maybe many in this room, would have said three years ago, now where is Twin Air? Well, that's going to change over the next few years. One of the first things we did was brought together five neighborhoods. A lot of folks don't realize that this was just not one neighborhood, but five that worked <coughs> together. Along with Twin Air, we have SECO, the Southeast Community Organization. We can, which is west and east of Churchman Avenue neighbors. We have Christian Park, and we have Norwood. And I think we have folks from each of those neighborhoods here today. So. It is the neighbors who are going to benefit from this. Uh, I know uh, there's a lot to be done. Uh, one of the things that I said when I was told this might happen is I don't want to lose the good friends and citizens, including you, Jeff, Shannon, and Rhonda, because they've been great in working with us through this plan. So we don't want to lose that, okay? <laughs> and now we go to the city, um, a visionary, uh, Jeff, you are. Joe, I'm sorry. That's Jeff. Yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah, I answered it. I, 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 I <laughs> you are a visionary. Uh, I have been in this world from 1980 to 1990, and we need to attend to all of our population, and you are doing that. And we're, with Twin Air, we're going to work alongside you to make it place where the nation will look to for uh, their future. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks to Twin Air Neighborhood.
as long as that sort of environmental infrastructure needs to be mitigated. I will uh, defer to my environmentalist part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can that. Sure. Um, so, so we are actually um, working with the, the uh, IDEM uh, department, the Indiana Department of Environmental Management, working with them on the cleanup efforts so to make sure we get this right. And again, the cleanup efforts will be um, uh, sufficient enough to make sure that we can have um, people on, on, that, on, that city, on that side. So we started this, this process many, many years ago. We continue that process um, um, now, and, and we work with the city um, during the remediation process to make sure that, that again, um, everything is done in a proper way. Well, yeah, when we talk about water uh, quality being restored, that, that, that is associated with a deep block tunnel project. And so um, you have an issue here in Indianapolis, and, and there are a number of uh, communities in the with the same issue uh, called the mine sewer underground. And so our dignity project will, will capture raw sewage before it enters our rivers and streams. And so um, that's a long term project. However, um, once the mediation um, is completed, that's when the, the justice uh, uh, campus can. Well, again, I think um, the mayor can talk about their, their construction schedule, but but from a from a remediation um, uh, standpoint, there are still some things that, again, we talked about. Um, we're pretty much done with the President Creek. That was a primary uh, focus of ours. We wanted to protect um, the integrity, the water quality of the creek, and so that that has, has, has pretty much been completed. Um, and again, as I said, we're working with with Ida to complete other um, remediation efforts, and that include. Um, some digging up of some of the dirt, and moving up some of that, and then some clean um, dirt coming back into into the site. All again, um, we, we believe can be done in a, in a very meaningful time frame, sufficient enough for the, the city to, to start to start construction. Yeah, let me uh, introduce uh, Tim Moriarty, Council to the Mayor, and Andy Bowen, who is the City Corporation Council, talk a little bit uh, about timetables and details. Uh, in addition to Jeff's answer. Yeah, to directly answer your question, yeah, we're going to make the data and act on the time that we have to make the data and the time that we have to make the data. What's the status of uh, the architectural design and the financial uh, package? So this summer, um, or, yeah, this summer we requested a plan to launch facilities which will come out in the next two or three days. Um, so those are running on schedule um, and as we put together uh, those and begin that, that process we, we, uh, we don't anticipate um, any changes to our schedule right now. Um, we're still on budget where we were um, uh, and our funding mechanisms that we, that we start funding stack essentially that we put together. Um, when we presented that uh, resolution in the summer remains the same. So we're on time on budget. So when do you go before the council to lay out how much you're going to ask for and when you're going to ask? Yeah, so we have a proposal that we'll be introducing tonight, but actually, um, where we will uh, propose to begin construction as early as this spring, start moving dirt this spring, um, sort of in collaboration and coordination with citizens remediation efforts. Um, you know, citizens handling the remediation, us handling the, the preparation of the soil and, and So we anticipate uh, completion in 2021. Mr. Mayor, we just crossed, unfortunately, uh, looks like the 150 uh, number for a murder homicide rate. How does this criminal justice center or community justice center fit into that broader picture of dealing with the crime issue? And as a quick follow up, uh, have you folks figured out the bail situation with the Supreme Court? Because I know that was factored into the finance that you would have to hold <coughs> people to bail with the Supreme Court justice. There still seems to be some question as to whether the Supreme Court would apply to all counties or just a handful of counties. Yeah. Well, let me answer the first part of your question, Abdul. I'll defer to him uh, on your uh, bail issue. Um, look, it's um, it's heartbreaking. 
Um, at the same time, it's maddening that the city, uh, over the last seven years, has experienced each year a rise in the level of homicides. But to your question, yes, indeed, uh, our holistic criminal justice reform uh, efforts, the building of this community campus, uh, is designed uh, to provide treatment to those who need it, uh, who are addicted or abusing substance or have mental health challenges, mental illness, where currently today they're not receiving that help, uh, to try to break the cycle of the revolving door of justice, which helps them, helps the community, saves taxpayers money. Um, the program that we outlined last week uh, will be implemented immediately on a go-forward basis. It's not a program for six days. It's not a program for six months. Um, don't read any, I shouldn't use the word for the, for the number six. Don't read anything into this. Uh, it's, it's a program for six years um, over the long run. And I do think that we can turn the corner I think there is some evidence uh, in those areas where we have beat-oriented uh, policing uh, that the homicide rate, aggravated assault rates have gone down. It's too early to say that dispositively. Uh, we'll need more data, uh, but that's, that's precisely what we continue to do. And um, while 2017 has been a difficult year, like the seven years preceding it, uh, I do profoundly hope that 2018 will be Tim, you want to answer the bail question? Yeah, so um, as you know, I feel that was part of the criminal justice reform effort. Uh, it was a welcome sign from the Supreme Court. We've been working with the judge, Judge Davis, and the uh, We've been working with the courts to institute uh, evidence-based risk assessments, uh, and those were on track at all time. Um, what was the second question you had? Oh, no, just has the uh, Supreme Court, I know the submission of the Supreme Court rule and whether the bail will apply to all counties or just a handful of pilots, and how does that factor into the number of mitigated that bail population was a big factor in the financing of this whole operation. Yeah, so, so two points. So one, yeah, we're working with the courts to use risk assessment tools um, to address the issue the Supreme Court set forth. A separate part from that, though, that the dollars related to that aren't built into the financing of the police project. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you,